Now I wanted to talk all about frost seeding today. And it's interesting, frost seeding, there's different takes and um, I really, you know, frost seeding is all about getting seed on the ground that'll be viable and available and waiting to grow once the conditions of moisture and temperature, soil temperature align for that particular seed, that's ready to go. Now in the case of switchgrass, when you have hard switchgrass, and we're gonna talk about uh, clover too, but when it comes to switchgrass, if you have a high percentage of hard switchgrass in your blend, it needs to go through a process of stratification. Stratification means that the seed opens up through numerous frost freezes, excessive moisture, and is finally available to germinate and grow. Now unfortunately, a lot of times you don't get enough frost freeze moisture when you throw that down, and that switchgrass will not germinate until the following year. That allows weeds to come in and help compete with that switchgrass, and that's a very bad thing. So you don't want a high percentage of hard seed. We're seeing switchgrass right now as high as 70, 80% hard seed, and that's what you want to run from because that's not going to typically actually germinate for another year. Switchgrass is a smother crop. So it's awesome when it germinates early, you take care of it, put it in weed free, you mow it. Well, it establishes a very thick base that helps out compete weeds, but not if you only have 30% soft seed or 20% soft seed in the mix. The switchgrass we sell through WHS Wildlife Life Blend, you can check out the link in the description. My own seed company picked out every seed myself for every blend. And one of the things we did with switchgrass, we contracted a high price so that we get 10% hard seed count or 80% germination rate. So we only have 10% hard seed in the entire bag, which is a very good thing. But bottom line is you're putting that seed on the soil at a time where it opens up. Now, if it's soft seed, you don't need to do that. And so when we're talking about switchgrass, I prefer the methods of spraying simazine, which is a pre-emergent down, then hitting with Roundup 2,4-D. And then four weeks later after that, you're hitting with the first spraying when it's 8, 10, 12 inches tall, and then the second spraying is about four weeks later. With Roundup, you can spray the same, you can actually broadcast your switchgrass the same day. But let's back up to frost seeding. When do you frost seed? Well, if you have hard seed count, you want to frost seed. You don't frost seed when these are the conditions right here that Dylan's on. And you see, we're on a hillside right here. Look how deep that still is right now on March 22nd on our property down here on this drift area. You frost seed right here, a lot of people show frost seed and clover on snow. It's kind of silly because you don't need to actually frost seed clover. Clover doesn't have to go through a hard seed. It's not a hard seed. It doesn't have to go through a process of stratification. It's available for germination right away. Meaning you put it down, you get moisture on it, it's gonna germinate within a week. It doesn't matter if it goes through frost or freeze. So I'd rather see you take control of weeds in a situation. Like let's say this weedy area, which is actually a pollinator area. It'll come in in beautiful flowers. But bottom line is, if I wanted to put switchgrass here, I wanna wait till this greens up. Of course the snow's gone, I want that gone because if I frost seed on the snow, this melts fast, I'm gonna end up with all my seed down there. It doesn't matter if it's clover or switchgrass or what it is. So I don't wanna do that because I don't want all my seed pooling off to the side. Not smart to do on snow and even on flat ground, if you get a fast melt, it can pool off to one side. So I wanna wait till this greens up because once that greens up, I can hit it with Roundup 2,4-D. I can hit it with Roundup 2,4-D again, wait seven days after that. So meaning that it greens up first two weeks of spring, I spray it. Four or five weeks later, I spray it again. Wait a week, because I just put 2,4-D on the ground. You had to wait at least a week to spread the seed down. And then I'm gonna throw my seed on bare soil with no weeds growing, and then I have a good catch. You don't need to frost seed. So a lot of people that have been duped into frost seeding early, or when there's snow on the ground, without controlling weeds, are going to be left with a weedy clover field, and it's hard to manage at that point. You wanna put in clover, switchgrass, whatever it is, whatever you're planting for food plots or cover, into a weed-free environment. So no go on snow. Doesn't matter if it's switchgrass or clover, you don't want to do that. It's just the same with ice. So we get up and look how crusty this is. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the ice. Look at this right here. Put that on ice. What happens when this melts? Doesn't matter if, you, if your seed has been layered through snow down to this point or you're frost seeding on this ice. It's the same effect it ends up washing away down there and pooling. Not smart to frost seed. This is what you frost seed on. Ground, bare soil. The seed will get down in between the weeds and shape here. Look at all this right here. Even though there's a lot of debris on here, this happens to be old oats that are dead. 
But even though they have that, those seeds are gonna grow and hit the ground right on the soil and they'll do very well because it's not hard, it's not frozen, it's not all ending up over there. But obviously when we have this much ice and snow out here, we're gonna get many frosts and freezes. It's March 22nd right now. We'll have frosts and freezes all the way to probably early to mid-May would be typical for this area. So getting the seed down in the soil, say it's hard seed switchgrass, you're gonna do really well. And this is just in time for that. Clover, you can wait for some weeds to pop up in here, kill it. Two weeks after spring green up, let's say that's mid-April, third week of April. You can wait again five weeks later, kill it again to make sure everything's gone. You have open soil. All this will be dried out. It'd be almost bare earth by then. You could spread your seed down right before moisture. And then what we do, like these oats right here, this is a cover crop because what we have is pollinator blend under this area that we actually seeded down with the oats. Oats will be gone. And then we'll have pollinator growing in here in more of a weed-free environment because it was protected during the latter half of the summer growing last year. But this will just dry up and go away. So by middle of May, when we have moisture coming, we'll put our eight pounds per acre. We have our perennial uh, blend that has a lot of clover, bird's foot trefoil, alfalfa, chicory in it. So a really good perennial blend that'll last for decades if you take care of it. And then we'll add 50 pounds of oats per acre with that to act as a nurse crop in the bare soil so that we can avoid heat and drought and fizzling out that clover and actually killing it. I've seen that happen during the summer when you, when you get drought. So the, the oats act as a nurse crop. You mow those out after a couple months once the uh, clover has really taken and the perennial blend has taken hold. You mow that out. Now you have a perfect weed-free environment with a great base. And were you actually frost seeding? You didn't need to. You actually control the weeds here first. That's very, very critical. Really about the only time you want to frost seed with anything is when you have a high hard count switchgrass blend, which we're trying to help you avoid by offering a low percentage hard seed count in our blends. I would never want to sell 70%, 60%, 50% hard seed. We pay a lot of money and buy at very large volume to ensure that you get good blends all year long. But bottom line is frost seeding. You'll need it with bad seed basically, hard seed for uh, switchgrass. And now it's not to say you don't, that's your timing. You don't, you can put the switchgrass down in this soil right now. If you had good weed control, you're putting simazine down, you can still get a spraying of 2,4-D and Roundup before the switchgrass will actually germinate. You can spray the seed all you want with Roundup, simazine, 2,4-D. Once it's growing and it's in that initial growth phase, you, you'll kill it right out with glyphosate. You'll kill it with 2,4-D, even though 2,4-D is a broadleaf killer if it's germinating at that point but you still have plenty of time to let the green up in here with weeds spray one time so your timing might say well i want to get the simazine this has been chemically controlled last year you can technically frost seed even though it's soft seed switchgrass that's okay still get a spraying of simazine still get a spraying of 2,4-D and roundup and let it go or you can wait with clover get some weed control get some weed better weed control with with uh, switchgrass and seed later, especially with soft seed switchgrass, it'll germinate within 10 days. The bottom line is, great for frost seeding or spreading seed on, letting it grow later, you still have to take, take control of uh, weeds. This right here, this ice, is really bad. You don't want to ever frost seed on that. You can, doesn't take much imagination. You get a lot of rain, that seed goes off, let alone if it's down there in that deeper snow, it's gonna end up just sliding right off and pooling. And heck, if it gets under a bunch of weeds and other growth, it's not gonna germinate and grow anyway. It's gonna germinate and die because it's not gonna reach the sunlight. It's gonna be covered up. So hope that thoroughly explains frosting. There's a lot of people frosting clover right now. It is completely unnecessary. Switchgrass, you don't have to do that, especially if you haven't addressed, addressed weed concerns. If you have bad switchgrass seed with high hard count percentage, you know, when you're talking 40%, 50%, 60, 70, 80% hard seed, then you're gonna want a frost seed so that's viable and you get a better percentage that's growing. And you're still gonna have seed that's not gonna wait, that's going to wait until the next year to grow. But, uh, but you can get it done in frost seed if you want. Hope that makes sense of what frost seeding actually is. I think it's an overused thing. People are itchy, it's snowy out, they wanna go frost seed on top of snow. It's a very bad thing. I've seen it time and time again where it pools off to the side, even on flat ground, 
not a practice I would recommend. Sounds really cool on paper, but not really effective in the real world. And I'll mention right now, it's kind of cool. Dylan and I came out here to shoot this video. We're out basically in my backyard, house is over there, old food plot, switchgrass is just waking up. You can see how it's starting to stand up when the snow's gone, it, it pops right back up. But right down in that end, Dylan saw a rooster all the way down at the end. We've had one hanging around here and a, and a hen too. Uh, we didn't see the hen today, but Dylan wanted to flush it. So I got it on my cell phone actually, but Dylan went down there and got it in slow motion with the camera with his skills taking off right out of the thatch and flying overhead. It was pretty dang awesome because pheasants are an indicator species. We don't have a lot around here. So to see him actually living on the property and thriving and actually growing in population is a testament to the diversity we have on the property between cover, hardwood regeneration edge, our switchgrass, and all the work we've been putting into this. The grouse, the pheasant, the rabbit, they're three really major indicator species. And then although, and, and at the same time, uh, nesting turkeys. When you see you have good uh, nesting turkey populations and you see that they're nesting on the property, that's a good thing too because they need upland cover field mixed with hardwood regeneration, briars, that's perfect nesting for uh, turkeys. So we're seeing all four of those, nesting turkeys, grouse, pheasant, rabbits, you see all those happening you know you have great whitetail habitat and that's what we're working really hard to bring you and dylan caught a great glimpse of that right now so it all comes together we're talking about frost seed but we're getting excited and high-fiving about pheasants on the land right now hope that makes sense to you hope that clears some things up march 20 22nd right now you still have plenty of time couple months to seed high quality switchgrass and clover for this year now, I don't know if you've checked out our main website lately, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com, but we've really had a lot going on, including hats, books, our web class, and certainly our new seed company, WHS Wildlife Blends. When you click on seed on our site, it'll take you right to our brand new site for the seed company. We have all 12 blends available. So check it all out, though. I encourage you. I appreciate you checking it out. Whether you buy anything or not, Really appreciate you visiting the site and uh, seeing what's going on and continue to watch because we have big things coming later this year.